Hello, my friends of Cultivated Color. Welcome to another baselight training session. This is another fundamental one. And we continue with the topic of temporal processing in baselight. Okay, let's dive into the timeline. Today, we're having another look at frame rates in baselight, but this time not the input mapping. That means the conversion from the input footage of a scene to the working frame rate, but the output mapping of frame rates. There we're dealing with two different signal paths. We have one mapping to the cursor output. That's our live preview during grading. There we can set the video mode in BL setups. And we have a different signal path going to the render output. And there we can set the render frame rate and the movie frame rate or metadata frame rate. And we will discuss all of these different terms today. Let's start with the cursor output frame rate. When we examine the cursor parameters in Baselight, we notice that there is no frame rate selectable because the frame rate of the cursor output is determined in BL setups. There we can select the video mode of the output. I'm running this presentation from a laptop without a dedicated video output option. So my cursor frame rate is locked to 60p, which is the native refresh rate of the computer display. But if you have a dedicated video output option in your machine, like a Kona card, then you can select the video mode here in base light setups. And there you can select the output frame rate for your cursor. Ideally, this frame rate should match your working frame rate of your scene. Otherwise, you will see a cadenced playback. That means skipped or doubled frames. Let's go to a clip in my timeline here. So my timeline is a 24 FPS scene. And here in my display settings, I can activate the option show playback FPS. The shortcut is F for that. You now you can see here stopped at the top. If I'm playing, you see it's now playing back with 24 FPS, but it says cadenced. That means we can't deliver the frames one by one to the video output. So the playback might not look as smooth as it could. On this machine here, the only option to get the cadenced message go away would be to work in a 60p scene, which is usually not practical. But when you have a dedicated video output, you should always first check that the setups is matching the frame rate in your scene settings here. If you're unsure, then use that F shortcut and check if you're dealing with a cadenced output or if frames can be delivered one by one to the video output. Let's take a closer look at how we can deliver different frame rates from a scene. My scene here is 24 FPS. And now our task is to deliver a 25 FPS version of it and also a 23976 deliverable from it. Both cases work in a very similar way. And I think both are very common tasks depending on the region where you are working. We will set this up live in Baselight in a moment. But first I want to make very clear, you should almost never change the render frame rate from the scene's working rate. As soon as you change the render frame rate, you will introduce temporal interpolation. That means skipped frames, doubled frames, or if you're working with other interpolation methods, uh, artifacts of uh, optical flow or double images of mixed nearest frames. So typically we never want to change the render frame rate. Let's open the render view and have another look at that. Here I can add the render frame rate. So this one you should almost never touch for a deliverable to another frame rate because this one will always introduce temporal artifacts. So always leave this on the green one, which is the scene's working frame rate. Okay, so I hope that was very clear. So now what if we want to change that deliverable here, that progress from 24 to 25. So this is our task now. I change first the name here of my deliverable tab. And then we go in here. The thing that we typically want to do with the 24 to 25 conversion is we want to play back the frames of the timeline 
with a faster frame rate. So that means the amount of frames of the content stays identical. So my timeline here at the moment has 208 frames. That means a 25 FPS deliverable will also have 208 frames. We just want to play it back faster. So we need to render the same frames as a 24 FPS deliverable, but we want to tell the player that plays back the ProRes, please play it back with 25 instead of 24 FPS. So what we need to do is we need to change the metadata of the QuickTime file. And this in Baselight is available as the movie frame rate here. So we leave the render frame rate at 24p, but we set our movie frame rate to 25. So this one is just affecting the metadata of the movie file. In the old days, there was the Apple software cinema tools available that had the capability to change the metadata of QuickTime files once they were created. So this is the same mechanism. So if you're familiar with that cinema tools method, this is what you need to do. Movie frame rate 25. Now let's go through the other options. Um, yeah, here for, for the metadata, we embed the rec timeline timecode. If that file needs to have a 25p timecode, which is technically not necessary, but if you want to embed a 25p timecode, you would go to scene settings, general, and here timecode. Here, this is already preset and I could change it here for also to my desired start time code of the timeline and the time codes frame rate, which will be embedded in the metadata of the clip. Okay, so this is our ProRes file, but what about image sequences like DPX, EXR, TIFF, and so forth? They don't have a movie frame rate. So here also there's no option in base light on the render page to change the movie frame rate. What if we have to render a 25 FPS DPX sequence from our 24 FPS timeline? Actually, the case is even a little bit easier because a DPX sequence is just a sequence of frames. And as we already discussed, our sequence of frames will stay identical. The original timeline has 208 frames and our rendered 25 FPS timeline will have 208 frames, the same 208 frames we could just declare it as a 25 FPS DPX sequence and continue working like that in other software. But certain image sequence formats like DPX or EXR, they have some metadata in the headers of the files that determine the frame rate. And this is what we can set here in the metadata section of the render page. So here I would again embed the rec timeline timecode, which is now set to 25 for that render. And here I would now set this to 25 for the metadata frame rate of the DPX sequence. So far, so good. I should also change the labeling here of the folder to 25. Also that ProRes file here. Let's check here the name of it to 25. This should work. So how would we do it for 23976 from a 24 FPS timeline? So maybe I just duplicate that deliverable preset and I label it 23976. Yeah, actually it's quite easy. We would just change the movie frame rate here to 23976. Now I will keep the timeline timecode identical but in this case, we could set it back here to 24 FPS. Um, but also a quick time with a 25 FPS timecode will play back as 23976 technically. So that should be fine because I want to render all of these at once. Now I duplicate my DPX deliverable here instead of 25. We do 23976 and we go down here and adjust the metadata frame rate. Also, we should adjust the names here. 
Also, let's check the ProRes. I guess I also forgot changing the name here. Okay. So now let's kick off these renders. I select the correct render range here. I only want to render these three clips and hit Submit Render. That's done. Okay, let's open Flux Manage and have a look at our rendered output. So here, let's first examine our two ProRes clips. Here's our 25 FPS clip. We can see the correct metadata, 25 FPS, the duration 208 frames. Here's our 23976 ProRes. Let's maybe put them into the timeline to compare them to the timeline. When you watch the temporal one session, you will now see that here the frame rate, the selected rate is also matching the input rate. When I double click this to insert, I will now use the scene rate to align it again with the source frames. So to play back the clip at uh, 24 FPS. And what we should see is that the clip, if I set the stack color space to the input space matches ideally or perfectly to the timeline here. What about the other clip, the 25 clip? Again, we will play it back as 24 FPS to compare it to the timeline. And we should also see it's matching. And the same is true for our image sequences. So here we have 208 frames as DPX and we can see it has a frame rate of 25. And this one here, again, 208 frames and a frame rate of 23,976. So this is how you deliver to different frame rates from a base light scene. Here that slide here sums it up again one more time for you and where to set it. For movie files like MXF, IMF or QuickTime, use the movie frame rate on the render page. For image sequences, use the metadata frame rate, which you can see here. And if you need to embed a matching time code, then adjust the speed and the start time code in your scene settings. And don't forget to use rec timeline time code as metadata source during rendering. Okay, that's all I wanted to show today. Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is um, audio. So maybe I instantly jump back into Baselight. So when you would deliver a 25p version of that 24 timeline, you might be handed or in, in a normal scenario, you would be handed with separate audio files, separate audio assets for 25p. And then you could put them into the um, either as assets into the timeline. And then what you would need to do is you would then need to adjust the playback ratio of these assets to first match your timeline FPS. So for 25 FPS, you would first convert it down to 24 to be in sync with the timeline. And then after the rendering and with the movie frame rate, it would then, then match up um, to the final product and the same is true if you have the audio here in the a scene audio for the whole um, timeline and if you were dealing with 23 976 and 24 then you will probably know that the ratio is 1001 2000 or 1002 1001 so these are the ratios for that case all right Thanks for uh, watching this session. And if you have more questions, please comment below the videos as usual and see you next time.